What is up everyone? Today we have quite a bit of news to talk about, a few interesting things coming out for the quest once again, and then we have something that is pretty damn universal. So let's jump straight into the news. So first thing we have is to do with Zuck, because Zuck has been doing a little bit of thinking out loud and telling us what he thinks about virtual reality. And it seems that Zuckerberg thinks that consumers are not going to go for wired VR. And I mean, yeah, I kind of agree with Zuckerberg. <laughs> Realistically speaking here, after I posted my Pimax video, a lot of people, first thing they said is, oh my god, it's not wireless, I'm not going for it. Which makes sense. Let's just remember, that was my mom's first reaction as well. And to be honest, it's still kind of my reaction. I still look at cables and I go, ugh. But they are there for stability. I mean, I don't think we're 100% there yet for wireless to be as good as cable, even though it is reliable enough for you to be able to play comfortably on it, some people still prefer that reliability of a wire, which is why we have diversity and which is why we have choice. But most people, it seems, are not going to go for wired in the near future. A lot of people are going wireless. And again, as I said in one of my previous videos, a lot of people bought the Quest not because it was cheap, but because it allowed them to do wireless PC VR through virtual desktop. So yeah, I mean, this is quite an interesting conversation to start on because I know a lot of you will use the link for stability, but I also know quite a lot of you are using wireless VR for that cable free experience. So I would love to hear what you guys think down below. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with Zuck or are you using the link and prefer to use that over wireless VR? Now, looking at the Quest 2, it seems we are also going to be looking at a huge hand tracking update. Now, a few of you know, I used to have issues with hand tracking in the past. Thankfully, those seem to be solved now. And every time I do a hand tracking video, you guys ask me, what's up? How on earth is your hand tracking this smooth? Well, the answer is, I don't know. It just seems to be a luck game at this point, whether your hand tracking is good or whether it's bad. I know good lighting can help, but hand tracking is now getting a 60 hertz update, which is really, really good because it means the headset should be able to track your hands at a higher refresh rate. So Oculus Quest 2 developers can now enable a new high frequency hand tracking mode in their apps, increasing the tracking rate from 30 hertz to 60 hertz, which is literally double. Facebook claims this mode increases hand tracking quality as well as reducing its end-to-end -end latency by 10%. Its internal strike team enabled the new mode in Tiny Castle's demo and reported the following results. In Tiny Castles, we observed that high frequency hand tracking results in a slight reduction in perceived latency, but also significantly improved tracking quality during fast hand movements. That was a big issue. The fast hand movements were a huge, huge issue with hand tracking. If you went like this, it would just go. And of course, with more sampling, with more refresh rate, that should potentially be a lot, lot better. There were no perceived changes regarding jitter and occlusion. So this is quite exciting to see. A lot of people really enjoy hand tracking and for myself sometimes when I even do productivity I would just whip out my hands and go whoop 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 you know go to the browser and stuff you know just like yesterday I left that phone call in there and as some of you found out in the comments section as some of you seemed to agree I left that phone call with axe in there just in the middle because I thought it was incredibly seamless the fact that I could just fire up the oculus web browser and google the cooler he was talking about seemed really cool to me when watching it back and some of you caught on to that in the comments section so so yeah, that's that's kind of why I left it in there to begin with. But yeah, hand tracking, really cool, really exciting. Oh yeah, here's an interesting one. And I actually got DM'd on Twitter about this one. Oculus will sell you a Quest 2 without the need for a Facebook account, but it's going to cost you $500 more. Or will they? Because this is not the Oculus Quest 2 that they are going to sell to consumers. The consumer VR headset is $299, as we know, or more if you're in an EU country like myself. But the problem with this headset, for many, is the fact that it requires a Facebook account. According to me and multiple other people, Facebook is selling the Oculus Quest 2 at a loss, because they can afford to do that. Other companies can't afford to do that. For example, this is why HTC's new headset is going to be priced more, because they don't collect your data to later on make money off of that. They're not a company that can afford to do that. While Facebook here can afford to sell the Quest 2 at a loss because 
well, they get that money back in your data, if that makes any sense at all. And again, some people don't care about that at all, and myself personally, I, I, I don't really know what I feel about it. It's like, you give me virtual reality headset, I give you my personal data, no problem. But this is why other companies can't afford to sell their headsets at this price. But there is a huge but, because Facebook also sells a business-oriented headset, and that business-oriented headset is the Oculus Quest 2. It has the exact same specs and it's the exact same headset, but it doesn't require a Facebook account. The catch? It's $799, which is quite a bit steeper. Now, I wonder if this is the price Facebook should be selling the Quest 2 at. With everything it has, 120 hertz, almost 4K wireless capabilities, fully standalone, now Airlink. I wonder if this is the true price they should really be selling it at. But there's also another catch that kind of muddies the water quite a bit more. There's also an annual fee of $180 that kicks in a year after purchase, which covers Oculus's business services and support. Which is, uh, I don't know, like I, I feel like an annual fee really isn't necessary here, but then again, if you're a business and you're getting that support, it's probably that's going to cover the cost of that. Now, the real question from me to you guys here, because now I know about this and quite a few of you maybe even knew about this, because I'm almost certain that the business oriented headset isn't a new thing. It's just this article came out yesterday and I just got notified about it now. My question to you is, would you buy that? Would you buy the Oculus Quest 2? business headset at $7.99 if it didn't require you to have a Facebook account. Because I know some of you would, and that's my question to you. With the new HTC headset coming in maybe something around that price, with Oculus's software experience, is it worth it? I don't know. I would love to hear your opinions on this down below, because this is quite an interesting one. Now, here is my universal topic for you. HTC Vive is set to unveil not one, but multiple headsets during ViveCon. And HTC has been incredible on our server during the last few days. Seriously, like yesterday we played Beat Saber for them. I just want to say a huge thank you to HTC because they have seriously brightened up our day joining that server. It, it's it's honestly just hilarious, makes us laugh, makes us smile every time we talk to them. Even though they don't talk back, like they're always muted in VC, just knowing that they're there for some reason puts a smile on our face. I don't know why. Can you rotate for us like very slowly? I'll, I'll make it happen. I swear. It's, I'm really confused. If you were to visit HTC's website now, you would see that the event claims the company will reveal game-changing VR headsets. That's plural with an S at ViveCon. So reading down further, and this is a quote, take a front row seat at the VR event of the year as HTC Vive unveils game-changing VR headsets, software, and platforms to take your experience to a whole new level. So it seems that us thinking a few weeks back that HTC may unveil not one, but a few VR headsets like they normally would seems to be true. And I'm really, really excited for this because this could mean that they're going to reveal a prosumer headset and maybe a lower spec consumer headset. I don't know guys, we literally have 11 days left until ViveCon. This is very, very exciting. Also, they've been partnering up with some pretty huge companies. For example, they partnered up with iFixit now for the right to repair, and they've partnered up with BNP Pictures to bring your beloved anime content to VR on Viveport. So they've been partnering up with quite a few companies here that we might honestly care about when it comes to consumers. So it does seem like they're heading for consumers. And again, they've been joining Discord servers now. It clearly shows me here that I think they're heading for consumers, which is great because I don't think I would survive another enterprise grade VR headset and no consumer VR headset. I'm just looking forward to this way too much. Now, here is something that I am quite split about. Side quest on your Oculus Quest, like literally inside the Oculus Quest. Uh, Cass and Cherry made a video about this, so I would totally recommend you check that out down below. I'm going to link that down in the description below. Their video is a lot more detailed than anything I will go into here because I was actually quite split on making this video because we knew about this the day uh, SideQuest came out. I pinned a comment about this and said I would release a video, but the thing is I'm quite split about it because you still need a PC to do it. In fact, you need a PC every time you restart your Quest. Well, not a PC you can use a phone, but you need to run an ADB command wiring the quest to your device 
either way, every time you restart. And I don't know about you guys, but I turn off my quest every time I'm done playing, which is why I'm quite split because it's not actually side quest fully running on the quest itself. You still need to be tethered at least once every time you restart, which is still really annoying, but it does work. Basically how it works is it uses ADB over Wi-Fi. What you do is you enable ADB over Wi-Fi and then inside the quest using side quest you connect to your quest using ADB over Wi-Fi. This is essentially how we used to run commands on the quest when it came to things like the resolution mod. We would use that ADB over Wi-Fi to kind of force trigger the quest to connect to itself and run commands like that. And this this was always possible but it's not ideal because it still requires you to have a PC. I'm still waiting for the day where we can fully run side quest on our device and not have to have a PC tethered or a phone tethered. But unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen because SideQuest is trying to stay on good terms with Oculus and that is bordering very close to TOS about app stores on the Quest and things like that. So I don't think they're going to do that. Either way though, uh, I'm gonna show you a very, very quick tutorial on how to do this. But again, I totally recommend if you have any issues with this one, check out Cass and Chari down below. Their one is much more in depth, but um, people did want me to show you this. So I don't know, maybe you guys just like my voice for some reason. Now that I'm done with the disclaimer and the fact that this isn't actually completely standalone, here's what you do. First of all, you're gonna need the APK for side quest. I'm gonna link you to a Reddit down below on which you can actually get that APK, or you can actually use APK extractor on your phone if you have an Android phone to extract that APK yourself in case you don't trust the one off Reddit. Okay, now that you've got the APK, you are going to want to sideload the APK to your quest. This is pretty simple. Use SideQuest to do it, use Bug Jaeger to do it. Now you can even use SideQuest on your phone to do it in case you have an Android device. On PC, it's pretty simple. You connect your quest to your computer, you fire up SideQuest, click this button in the top right corner, select the APK that you just downloaded from Reddit, double click on it, and boom, it's going to sideload straight to your quest. Now with SideQuest, on your Oculus Quest, go to unknown sources and launch side quests. You're going to see the UI just like you would on your mobile phone. Now what you want to do is once again, have your quest connected to your PC and enable ADB over Wi-Fi. You can actually do that in a few different ways. You can either do it by clicking this button in the top right corner of side quest or using this ADB command, just in case you want to run a command in ADB instead of using side quest. With ADB over Wi-Fi enabled, you can now grab your quest IP address either by checking side quest or by opening up your Wi-Fi set and checking in there, and then take that IP address and throw it into SideQuest. Then, going back to the SideQuest app on your Quest, click in the bottom left corner on the little Wi-Fi icon and type in your Quest IP address into the IP box right here. In fact, SideQuest should actually show you your headset's IP address on the page where you need to type it in, so that's really handy. Then click connect, and boom, you should now be connected. So you can now fully run SideQuest inside your Quest until you restart it, until you turn it off, or anything like that. Just use it like like you normally would, which is really cool. Again, it's really cool until you restart your quest. You can also run commands in here, of course, like the command for 90 hertz, the command for 120 hertz. You can run basically anything you would off side quest on your PC, now literally inside your quest. But again, I, d I just don't see this as being the perfect solution, but it's an option and I hope it helps some of you out. But yeah, that is going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. And if you guys liked the video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, make sure to join our Discord down below. Have some fun with us and HTC next time they join in. I'm now going to list HTC as a valued partner of the Discord server. <laughs> And if you guys would like to post some spicy memes, we also have a Reddit down below. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick merch down below that doesn't put a huge ad on your body, and mugs that boost your FPS by 300%. And if you guys want to be notified of extra content coming up on the channel, make sure to subscribe button with your forward, ding my bell, and see you in the next video. Peace.